Okay, okay. So that's one of the questions. What's in the box? What's in the box? Not till you give me the What's gun. in the box? I was just mad that like he didn't open it right when he got it. Like I would be excited. I'm like, open it, open it. Like that's like getting presents on Christmas and not opening on Christmas. You open like a week after Christmas. Like what? You didn't open it on Christmas? <laughs> yeah, not like right now. that shit. I would have been like, what? <laughs> Bye. Falcon and the Winter Soldier, episode five, the truth. The truth. The truth always comes out. I don't have to tell you all, but heavy, heavy spoilers. So if you have not seen the episode, leave now and then come back. This episode was much slower paced in terms of action. You know the calm before the storm is coming and it's like when, when it happens, you're like, wait a minute. It's definitely the calm before the storm. So because I think next week, which is the final episode, is going to be one big expensive action spectacle. It was a lot of dialogue, it was a lot of character development. It was a lot of really good character development. It was still a great episode. Actually, it's still one of my favorite episodes. I think yeah. you said that about every episode. Like, every episode is our favorite episode. I know, right? <laughs> After WandaVision, I was kind of afraid that the show was just going to be, you know, the Marvel popcorn movie. And we are getting that, don't get me wrong. It's good to see the substance with the fights. Correct, exactly. Yeah. There's a lot of substance to the show, definitely. This Most is going to be a tough one to follow. And it... You, you, we say that about every Marvel thing. We're like, how are they going to follow that? The episode basically begins uh, with John Walker on the run. It takes place moments after he's killed Nico publicly and was recorded via cell phones. It was probably broadcast to the world. So knowing the internet, every the entire world knew about it <laughs> within minutes. As mad as I am at him, I am really starting, really feeling for him. Yeah, yeah. He's alone in that warehouse, and that's where we see him really struggling. And it's sort of a heartbreaking moment because he's kind of going through this inner tur turmoil, and he's uh, he's feeling a lot of guilt. And his shield is literally still wet with blood. And then, but it's funny because there's this moment where he's just like thinking about Lamar, he's thinking about what he did, and he feels his guilt, and he literally just snaps. And I swear, if I could put the scene in there, he's like, and he's like back to work time to go to work and he just yeah 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 he's like got a job to do but yeah but at the same time like the the signs he's showing like he's convincing himself that he didn't kill the wrong person that's like that's psychopathic that's like psychotic right there yeah that's now you're, you. yeah now you might be showing like signs of craziness so unless you're talking about him going crazy you really see it in his eyes when he's about to, when he's standing over Falcon and he's about to kill him and he's like, I am Captain America. I am Captain America. And there's like literally spit yeah. coming out of his mouth. <laughs> that was a medieval face for sure. Medieval. That was, that was madness. Nothing short of madness in his eyes. And you're right. He was like a five-year-old. like, I am Captain America. There's so many layers to him. A douchey, entitled asshole, but who's also very vulnerable and insecure, but who's also very heroic and noble. He's loyal to his government. And one of his best lines early on in that first act is, you built me. Yeah. But it's the poster boy, dude. That's, that's every, there has to be like a poster boy to fall. That's how the government gets away with stuff. You glorify somebody, make them big. And, you know, they mess it up, it's all their fault, then there'll be another Captain America behind him, exactly. you know what I mean? Exactly. He's the typical American soldier that just got, like, used out by the country. Yeah. And he's, like, seeing, like, you know, the reality right. of, like, all that he's, like, he's been working hard for and doing good for, and it's no, yeah. it was no, there was no benefit out of it, like, I'm just a number. And, 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 and that's why I... Right after he was being cheered for it. Exactly, exactly. Like, they build you up and they tear you down. Um, but again, that's another reason I, I feel for him, because you're right. He does kind of reflect a lot of what happens to actual veterans, which is, you know, once they're out and they're done, society forgets about them. But uh, it's so funny, though. It's like, 
at the same time, he just, he reminds me of a child. Like, it's like a child running away with a temper tantrum. Mm -hmm. And the two parents are coming and chasing him. They want to take his shield away. And he doesn't want to take his shield away. It's like, it's yeah. Like, it's he's, so funny. It's like, <laughs> he's very multi layered. Again, why Russell deserves accolades for the job he's doing with this character and the writers, obviously. The writers have written this villain. I don't know what you call him. Would he be considered a villain? When you say villain, I think he started out as a hero and then he became a villain. There's, there's, I think it's a difference between just being a straight out coming out villain and then you're a good guy becoming a villain. So I'll give him that. With the exception of Loki in the past, Marvel has not done a good job of developing villains. But I think the MCU is learning now that the villains are just as important and more interesting, if not as interesting as the heroes. So now we're getting Zemo. Now we got Hela, we got Thanos. We still have Loki, and now we got John Walker. All right. So lucky for us, this episode was full of nerdgasmic moments. You know, that scene or reveal in a comic book movie that makes your inner nerd scream and soil their pants. That fight scene, though. What do you guys think of that fight scene? Uh, that was the best. And that's exactly how the episode started off, and it was amazing. My favorite line was, uh, he basically, he's like, you're going to take the show from me? He's like, and Bucky's like, that's exactly what we're going to do. <laughs> Bam! <laughs> and he was like, you don't want to do this. And Bucky's like, kind of do. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> <Can't see you. laughs> was, that was tight. But he was like, I'm sick of this bullshit. You're about to get the show from me. I don't care. So wow, like, oh my gosh, I love that whole fight scene. It was like, it was amazing. And Sam and Falcon, like, he, he keeps impressing me more and more, like, dude, dude. His, he's, he's, he is using that booster to the fullest capacity. Like, it is awesome. I even, I, I even have, like, names from the little moves he's been doing. Dude, I call this one the, the, the Falcon Low Roundhouse Suite. <laughs> oh my <laughs> God. <laughs> My number two is I call it the the grappling takeoff hook fly, where he like flies and he always like grabs something with the hook and pulls it away. The booster backflip kick. Yeah, yeah, Bam. yeah. Bam! This is the best one. The booster pull. <laughs> like he uses it to get like a little extra pull to get the shield away. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He does that. He does like a roundhouse kick, but with the wings. Like he does this roundhouse. Yeah. They should do a, a video game, like a fighting video game, and have Falcon as one of the characters. I'm doing roundhouse wing, wing sweep! Roundhouse wing! There was, a, there was two more, like, there was, like, a booster break, and there was a... And then there was, like, a shield thing where um, Bucky grabbed his leg and swung him with the shield, and they knocked John out. Oh, yeah! That was, that was a, the double team that was the double team hit that was that was awesome they're like it's time to end it like they can not balance that yeah. they're like hey. and you know nerds us geeks we love when the two comic book characters combine their abilities together and then it, that was the final blow they're like Ding! it was it was awesome and it was awesome they literally had to rip the shield out of his arms like they had to break, break it out of his arms and the yell he did when they took out his head, he's like, no! It was like a fight. No! Let's talk about one of the best scenes is shield training montage. That's called a montage. Oh, that was just too much. It's like, I was dreaming of that. Dude, best montage ever. He made me feel like I could actually possibly throw that like that catch it like <laughs> so you gotta have confidence when you're trying to catch it but dude i can't catch a football if i do that shit, i would decap decapitate myself immediately oh uh, there has to be like a right and a wrong way to do it dude he was gonna decapitate himself like 20 times in that he was like bro i i would have killed one of my nephews my nephews would have come out at the wrong time uncle sam bang I have to explain to their mother and shit. I told you to put that damn shield away, I told you. Another great moment was Marvel finally blessed us. Stan Lee from Heaven Above blessed us with an end credit. 
we finally waited through the credits and got our treat for being good Marvel fans. That was the best. I was scared when you were like, you gotta be a true Marvel fan. Cause I was like, I know I watched every credit to the end. I was like, I don't think I missed one. So that was no, like, no. it was yeah. just one. It was okay. just one. It was, I don't know why they're doing that. They're, they're playing with our emotions, but yeah, they did that in WandaVision too. I think they waited like all season. And then finally in one episode, they just drop one randomly, but they see they're, they're testing you. They want to make sure you're loyal. You give them a little free taste and it, it brings them in. It brings them in. <laughs> Give me my end credits. Give me my end credits. <laughs> <laughs> uh, end credit scene or mid credit scene, whatever you want to call it, is John. He's taking one of his medals and he's basically creating his own Captain America shield. He is not letting it go. He oh, is convinced no. he's Captain America. No matter what, nobody tells him. I'm like, I just didn't like the size of the shield. I would have made it, I would have made it just the biggest Captain America. He got like a little oval one, like. I think it will be. He had to do it in layers. Like my things, like your your shield is even vibranium, bro. It's not even. I know, I'm like you're, you're using parts like straight out of your garage. Like I'm not gonna go against no dude with a gun. Like you look like you got like the trash can just like ripped it apart. He was tearing it apart with his hands. I was like, dude, I don't know. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, come on. Like I feel sorry for you and your shield, but I. It, I like that scene because it kind of shows like where he's mentally at. Like he's gonna be Captain America no matter what. Trash can lid shield or not, he's Captain America in his own head. So let's talk about, you know, our titular characters, Sam and Bucky. So the antagonistic buddy cop trope between them finally comes to its obvious conclusion, which is you know, they learn to like each other, they learn to become buddy buddy. We get that wonderful little bromance uh montage where like they're building the boat and he's, they're helping each other out and it's like oh a, no that was cool i loved it i loved it dude i love the the sam and bucky father and son football shield throw toss in conversation that was a, yeah <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> it was just like a football or a frisbee and it was just like a vibranium yeah. shield like it's a father and son moment with cap shield we get this amazing conversation between sam and bucky that basically brings both of their character arcs to a conclusion. I think since the next episode is going to just be like big spectacle, the, they had to kind of conclude their story arcs in this episode. So Sam, Bucky, and also John Walker, if you think about it, kind of had the same struggle or kind of going through the same character arc through the entire show, which is they were all allowing themselves to be defined by others. Sam finally comes to the, uh, the realization that no one can define him but himself, not society, not the government, not even Isaiah. And then there's a great line where he tells, he tells Bucky, he says, it doesn't matter what the hell Cap thought of you. And then we have John Walker, which we talked about earlier, which is he let his, the government make him who he is. They're the ones that decided who he's going to be. And all three characters, they've all come yeah. to the conclusion that you make your own fate. You decide who the hell you're gonna be. And he kind of gave Bucky like closure, like with his like personal problems. He's like, go fix it, man. Like, he's like, you gotta do the work. And that was uh, that was Sam's like counselor, right? He was he was he, the yeah, counsel. He said, if you want the tough love, you gotta be of service to like the people you wanna. Yeah. It closes like Bucky's like his his personal mission, like right. Like now there is a there's a conclusion with him like it's yeah know. yeah and it yeah. reminds me of the first uh, I don't know if it was first or second episode where Bucky and Sam had that that couples counseling scene which nothing got resolved but this was kind of a reflection of that to where now they were kind of each other's therapists in the scene so they both uh, I think they both helped each other come to yeah. you know, like catharsis had to help them open each other's eyes yeah right right it's like the relationship between um the falcon and uh the black captain america i say bradley Isaiah bradley yeah yeah that was a rough scene for a lot of very specific reasons no just like when he was like you know i want to like let's talk about it but like uh he's like dude you gotta get a reality this shit ain't what you, you think it is and you know, the Falcon, he seems like he has all the answers for all these problems. You know, he's like a wise man, and the Captain America chose him. And, you know, he, 
he doesn't even quite have the whole picture, you know, like it's kind of yeah. like the the reality that Isaiah Bradley was putting on was like, whoa, like, it was so much in that one conversation. Like, that yeah, whole scene was, that scene was everything. Sam at some point says, you know, you could have been the next and he interrupts him. He's like, the next what? The next blue eyed, blonde hair. Uh, like what 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 is in your mind like what reality are you living sam and he even said he's like look if i'm going to become first of all they're not going to let an african-american be captain america number one number two a self-respecting black man doesn't want to be captain america he's like he's like if you ain't bitter then you don't get it like basically if you ain't living a better life you don't get it then like you don't understand if you ain't if you ain't unhappy like yeah you, you ain't figured it out. Yeah, he's like, if, if, if you're not better, then uh, then you're blind. Yeah, that's one of those really tough um, um, conversations between, like, um, soldiers today and soldiers yesterday. Yeah. You know, just, like, how they were just going to cover that up and, like, you know, just him breaking them out, getting them to safety, even got them into more trouble. I got even more of them killed. And you know, like he's like, what is good? Like, what am I doing? Like, what is the there ain't no benefit to this at all. I'm glad you brought that up because if you remember in the first Captain America movie, Captain America the first Avenger, what did Steve Rogers do? He went against orders and he broke his men out, right? He wasn't supposed to. He left, broke his men out, and then when he came back, he was honored as a hero. Uh whereas Isaiah Bradley did the exact same shit. And then what did he get for it? He went to jail and he got experimented on for I don't know how many years. Like, yeah, uh, they wouldn't send him his wife's letters. Yeah, it's uh, and it's, you know, the the show is not shying away from the racial commentary at all. They're not trying to hide it behind subtext. They're like, here it is, racism. I know it's it's funny because they were like in the comics. Clear. It was the same thing. There's no subtext. There's no metaphors here and there. It's like there's racism in America. <laughs> it hasn't gone away. It's been there for like since the beginning of, of America. Um, there's definitely privilege. Sam tells Isaiah, well, things are different now. And Isaiah's like, things are now different. Nothing has changed, <laughs> nothing. It's all the same, which is true and it's not true. It's true and it's not true. It's true in the yeah, sense that- Yeah, it's a perspective thing. I've, I've had um, older people say that to me. I was like, well, we're acting now. Mm -hmm. hey. um, they, they're millionaires like us now. Yep. So those people, they're like, they, they've been through like 30, 40 years of that shit. So it's just like, they've been so like brainwashed and like, you know, put in that situation like this. this some people, it's just too late to re, re uh, reprogram. Like, you know, they just well, stuck in their ways. Well, yeah, I wouldn't call it brainwashed, but I'd call it disillusioned. They're just like, yeah, they're not having Self-protecting, like, you know what I mean? Like, they got right. peace and they just want to stick with that. They don't need to re restart the fight. That's for the young people. And it's completely yeah, understandable. It's, Isaiah's right about everything he said. He is justified in the way he feels. It's kind of tough because it's like, you need your Isaiah's to let folks know what kind of risk they're taking. But you need yeah. your Sam's just to actually make the system work the way it should. Mm -hmm. I think they should, if Marvel's smart, they should do a seven episode miniseries on Disney Plus based on the seven issue miniseries in the comics and give us an Isaiah Bradley story. Like go back in time and do that whole thing as a miniseries, just knock it out. I think it would be fucking amazing if they did that. Carl Lumbly, he's killing it, man. I love that dude. That dude is awesome. He's yeah, like man. Perfect. Like, he needs his own show with that. They do. They well, need to give him his own, like, Captain America. I hope they keep him in the current MCU. Like, he's, like, you know, maybe if he serves as a mentor for Sam later on. But if they do a flashback story, they would have to cast someone younger, obviously. But yeah, he's awesome. What What is Carl Lumbly in? What has he else has he been in? He looks familiar. He's been in a lot of stuff, dude. Uh, he was the Mantis. That's where I remember him. Remember the Mantis? Oh my God! <laughs> Whoa. I, I love the Mantis. I know you remember that. I don't I, know if I liked it as much as you did. 
Dude, I loved it. As a child, I was like a black superhero on TV. Like, yes, okay, yeah. He, he was like an unforgotten hero, like nobody really heard about, but it was from 1994 to 95. He was in a... He did a lot of voices for Justice League in 2001, 2004. Mm. He was the he did the Black Panther in 2010. Oh, I love that, that one. That one that was on Netflix. That's cool. I guess maybe he was the voice. Yeah, he's been, he's been in a lot. Oh, of so he's gotten around. That is yeah, cool. He's the old old the old guy. Nice. He's in Black Panther, and now he's in this. Let's talk about Easter eggs. <laughs> The first reference and Easter egg is the title of the episode, which is Truth, which actually refers back to the seven issue limited series in uh, 2003, which was written by Robert Morales and drawn by Kyle Baker, introducing the story of the Black Captain America. And as we know, uh, there was a lot of truth in this episode that was revealed to us by Isaiah Bradley uh, when he actually went into detail, detail about his tragic very very tragic story a lot of what the isaiah story is based on was i want to call it an easter egg but it's more of a reference so the tuskegee syphilis study that happened between like the 30s and the 70s and basically what that was is the united states public health service and the cdc were basically i don't want to say experimenting but they were uh studying uh, a group of I think it was like 600 impoverished black men. 99 of them had syphilis. And what they did is they promised the participants that they would offer them free healthcare, uh, free treatment. If they were to, you know, participate in the study, they were being lied to the, the entire time. They weren't being treated at all. They were being given placebos. The sad thing is there was penicillin at the time that could have treated them, but they were using them as a control group to see what would happen if syphilis went untreated and that's some f up shit but it's it's almost exactly like isaiah's story just how they, like they were presented to them like like the serum was like it was supposed to be tetanus but it really wasn't and like so it was falling off and so another easter egg that we get is a reference to the raft the raft is the high security prison in the marvel universe half of spidey's villains are there yeah, that's where they keep all the, uh, the the super powered villains that they gotta lock up behind, you know, security glass and shit. So that's where the Dora Milaje were gonna take Zemo. Um, but the last time we saw the raft was in Captain America Civil War, and that's where they had to lock up Hawkeye and Ant Man after the the Battle of the Avengers. The reason the raft is important is because the rumors are Marvel is starting a Thunderbolts movie, and if you don't know what the Thunderbolts are, they're basically a group of villains just think of suicide squad but the marvel suicide squad in a way yeah so i think that's what marvel's setting up and the raft is where a lot of these villains would stay john's court trial is a great easter egg that's going back to captain america volume one number 332 i think the title of the storyline was captain america no more now in that story the government there's actually a scene where captain america's you know in this uh, office getting talked to by these government heads and they but this is steve rogers captain america and they strip him away of his title they take away the shield from him obviously in this show it's happening to john walker but uh it's great because it's almost like taking directly out of the pages that especially the imagery i like how marvel does that they'll take a lot of iconic comic moments and kind of redo them and remake them in a way i was reading some crazy facts on our uh that new lady the new character was contessa Valentina, Allegra de Fontaine. Her yeah. boots ain't made for walking. Her boots ain't made for <laughs> Yeah, her boots are not made for walking. So let's talk about her. So we get our cameo. So a lot of people said that there was going to be a special guest appearance in this. We were hoping it was going to be Captain America. But after uh, WandaVision, we don't get our hopes up too high. So we do get uh, Julia Louis-Dreyfus, uh, which is someone I never thought I'd see in a Marvel property um she's an 11 time emmy winner so she's great i love her in seinfeld so it's almost hard for me to separate her from her character elaine in seinfeld but she's a great actress um so i guess we go where the money goes true i was gonna say dude like marvel just gets all the top build actors by the time we get to like phase six phase seven there's not going to be any actors left in hollywood 
she gives me that like she's got yeah she's like that strong character she 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 gives me like that, that strong presence like on a on WandaVision the, the witch lady what's her name Agatha Agatha like yeah. she was like a strong like solid character that just came in like dominated like as soon as they come in like she has that presence when she comes in uh, as Sona said it's a tongue twister uh, Contessa Valentina Allegra de Fontaine. And I will admit, I'm a huge comic book geek and I consider myself well versed, and I did not know who the hell that was. Dude, she's op she opened the door to like some other shit that I was like, are you serious? It just never stops. So she's like a she's like an espionage spy, but she's like a Yeah, yeah. Yeah, she's got like a crazy crazy ass history and like she's connected to Sharon Carter and she's a she's a triple agent. She spies in Hydra, she spies in Shield, and then there's another another team that we didn't know about. They call them the the Leviathan. Leviathan, yeah. Like some kind of Russian syndicate or something. I I'm think like, it's oh, like they're the Russian the Shield. They're like the Russian Shield. Yeah. I, think. I think she was a love interest to Nick Fury. That's for sure. That's how she's introduced. She was introduced, I think, in the Nick Fury comics, and she was just like. Uh, you know, Nick Fury was kind of like a James Bond character back then, so he always had like the hot, sexy spy woman lover, and that's kind of like the role she played for a while. But she's such an obscure character, like she's like that's just one of the, like Marvel just had a hat of characters and was like Jessica De Fontaine, like nobody. That's a man. Who who picks these like random characters? They never really fleshed her out in the comics like too much. I think they, you know, she was. She appeared in the early Nick Fury days, and then she didn't really appear till like way, 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 way later. I think she takes on the title of Madame Hydra, like later on, that becomes her alias. So who knows? Maybe she's like restarting Hydra, and that's why she wants her dark Captain America. She wants to recruit him. In the comics, there was a storyline where Captain America was secretly a Hydra agent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, so that might be that. a clever Easter egg that they're kind of sneaking in there. That'd be cool. <sighs> Questions, predictions, and theories. Okay, okay. So that's one of the questions. What's in the box? What's in the box? What's in the box? What's in the box? I think we know what's in the box. I think we know, right? I'm like replacement Wakanda wings. I'm like, I'm calling Wakanda yeah, wings. Wakanda wings. We're all, well, I think we're all calling Wakanda wings. Definitely. And to be more specific, I think they're going to be red, white, and blue Wakanda wings. So just like that image that Sonus you have behind you, where in the comic book, Falcon, he eventually yeah. becomes Captain America. So he has like the Captain America themed Falcon suit. I was just mad that like, he didn't open it right when he got it. Like, I would be excited. I'm like, open it, open it. Like, he was a little day and a half, and they said he was alone to open it and shit. And I'm like, that's like getting presents on Christmas and not opening on Christmas. You open like a week after Christmas. Like, what? You didn't open it on Christmas? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's always like a like a comic book hero thing. Like, oh, I don't like these powers. Oh. Like like st struggling with powers and shit like oh. not right now not right now yeah not like right now. that shit I would have been like ah! <laughs> bye one thing I was really curious of I'm starting to wonder if um Shannon is a uh, um, red herring or not so that's just one of the questions we've had week after week we still haven't gotten an answer for it, which is, what the hell is up with Shannon, dude? Like, is it Shannon or Sharon? I always call her. It's Shannon. Wait, Sharon. I think it's, I think it's Shannon. Shannon? It's Shannon or Sharon. So we do find out that in episode one, Batroc the Leaper was actually hired by Shannon. Mm. So that's very interesting because she hires him again in this episode to basically arm Carly and the rest of the Flag Smashers. So she supplies them with weapons and bombs and under the understanding that Batroc gets to get revenge on Sam. So she offers him that way in. So who's 
side is she on? Is she a double agent, or is she is she evil now? That's definitely gonna be the sixty four dollar question. Okay, this is my question: Is he going crazy? Is the serum making him crazy, or is he just stressing out? Like, what is it? Flag Smasher, when she said that it, it just burned, they didn't have like all these reactions that. I guess to each his own, whoever gets it has their own way, but like those two, they just had, a, I'm just gonna go, they had a burning reaction like she said, but he's having like these like mental things, like. Well, I, I, I think it's a combination. It's a combination of him being stressed out by the pressures of being Captain America. And then there was the death of his best friend. And then there was this public display of him tarnishing the title of Captain America publicly. Uh, he just committed murder. There's fresh blood on his hands. Um, we talked about last episode of how he just got his ass handed to him and humiliated like 20 times by everyone. So it's all that. But if you remember in the first Captain America movie, the Captain America and the first Avenger, I forget the scientist's name who created the serum, but when he's talking to Steve Rogers, he says, the serum, if you're good, Inside, it makes you better. If you're evil inside, it makes you worse. I think it's both. I think the serum is, like Mikey said, it's working its way through his blood and combined with all this trauma that's suddenly on him, I think he's snapped. He's 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 delusional. He's magnifying whatever he's doing. All right, next question. What the hell was up with that card that she gave him? Uh, Defontaine, when she gave John Walker that blank card, what is up with that? There's, there's nothing on it. I had no idea. Of, it's gonna be one of those cards where you like take a lighter and burn it, and then it's gonna like Shh, meet me at four hundred five six three lane. <laughs> yeah, you have to or if you hold like it up a, to like a black light. Right, exactly. It's one of those things you like. One day he'll just be like, "Wait a minute!" Like it will just like appear, like dis disappearing ink. I have one final question we asked this in the first episode and it's still a lingering question and i don't know if they're gonna get to it but where is steve rogers where is old man cap he's living his life with peggy so did he go back to an alternate reality if he didn't start another time loop then um he just kind of lived his life like low-key I wonder that too, like, where is he? Or did he like die like right when he gave him the show? He's like, okay, I'm just like. <laughs> I don't think so, I don't think so. Went back into the blip and shit. <laughs> 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 he went back to preserve their time loop because of, um, you know, some of the items that needed to go back, like the Infinity Stones and whatnot. So they're in the proper time loop. Right. But then, so he basically lived out his life, waited till the times had caught up with him, and is like, I'm going to take a stroll over and talk to Sam and give him the shield. This is about the time Endgame would have ended. And then what did he do after that? He's like, well, I'm going to go retire somewhere. Or That would be the real question because, you know, after, because Peggy was gone. She had passed away. They implied she passed away, right? There's a screen capture of an old man um, carrying um, her casket, a lot of people say it's Steve. No, Steve carried her casket when he was young. Remember, there was that scene where it was young oh, Steve she, Rogers. Well, in in that cat. scene, there's another guy who looks a lot like he could be Old Man Cap as well. Oh, that's so interesting. That would be a great Easter egg. We need to... I, the same place at the same time? Yeah, there was a young it's Captain America and an old Captain America both bearing her casket carrying her casket Dang. and they don't even know each other. okay um i'm gonna i have to google that as soon as we're done here <laughs> whoa all right so that was our recap of falcon the winter soldier episode five join us next week and as always please like and subscribe leave a comment let us know how we're doing if you like our content and we, once again, we always thank you for watching us. This is it. This is it. The next one is the season and possibly the series finale. We will see you next week, Patriots.